الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد أما بعد All praise due to Allah We ask Allah to exalt the mention, grant peace and send the salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم One of the greatest calamities to afflict mankind in this modern era of social media platforms becoming the primary source of propagation and education is context. And what I really mean by context is the lack of it or people missing it altogether. And there are two contexts that are taken into consideration. One related to the topic and another related to the speaker. Regarding the context related to the topic, let me give you an example to bring the idea closer to home. When giving a lecture in a masjid, we would assume that the audience will be hard-pressed to misconstrue or misapprehend what the speaker is saying simply because they are receiving all data in its proper context. Exception would be if someone came late, they will know that they came late. So if they missed out on something, they will come and ask the speaker afterwards, Maybe I misunderstood. I, I missed the first part of the lecture. You know, what had you what what have you said previously so that I can understand what I missed out on or what I might have misunderstood? Other than that, those who came early don't have that problem. Um so the big so the person who attended the lecture from the beginning, he knows what was said in the intro, he knows the main points, he know he knows the arguments, and therefore. They can follow swiftly and have no issue in understanding the bigger picture as the bigger picture has been painted perfectly right before their eyes. Compare this to the internet lectures, reels, shorts, clips, and so forth. There is so much context missing. It would not be much of an issue if the audience was understanding or at least aware of this aspect. If they knew about it, if they incorporated it before they made uh, decisions or passed judgments, it would be fine. Instead, their expectations are unrealistic. We can see from the comments that people leave that they genuinely expect you to cover tens of topics and minute, subtle, intricate, and profound matters all within a clip that is about 5 to 10, minute, uh, to ten minutes tops. Classic example is some sister who did not leave an accusation out there that she did not hurl at us because in one short clip, we simply said that not just because a wife accuses her husband of abuse, this means that she's the victim and he is guilty. Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong if we said just because a wife said my husband abused me, you cannot automatically say this is an abusive husband and this is an abused wife until you hear his side of the story. That's all that we said. Be fair. Suddenly, this lady said, I hate women. Uh, I must have been abused as a child. I'm permitting abuse and so on and so forth. And all these accusations were made because in that little, in that short clip, she does not understand the overall picture that we've been drawing for years in the lectures. This is a miniature sample of many bigger examples where this happens. Okay? So listeners and viewers have to always bring this ayah to the forefront of their minds when they watch anything online. This is a general advice from your older brother or younger brother, depending on your age, for you to maneuver successfully through online content. The ayah says, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَةً Allah said, and when you voice an opinion, be just, even though it be against one near of kin. Meaning, even if it's against your relative, against your friend, in other ayat, وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Even against yourselves, Allah commands us to be just, to have adil in what we say, and what we communicate to the people, in the comments that we leave. This is the divine guidance, and that is what's incumbent on each and every one of us. People who are sincere, people who fear Allah, and who worry about accountability on the last day, they actually bother to do some homework and research before they type a single letter. If they see that this was a clip from a longer talk, they go to the original talk, which is often linked in the description, and or it's placed on the, uh, as, as something clickable, 
uh, something clickable on the actual uh, uh, monitor on the screen. When you're uh, when the speaker is speaking, if we let's say I mention something, you see it will appear a thumbnail will appear that you can click on to make it easy for you to connect lectures with with other ones, the smaller clips with their bigger talks. Um, so if they see this was a clip from a from a longer talk, they go to the original talk which is often linked to the description, and watch it in context, and then they voice their opinion. But what we have instead is people who literally comment after watching a few minutes of the clip. The smarter ones among them do not even watch, and they comment based on the title. <laughs> as soon as they see the title, they've already passed the judgment and they left a comment. And the greatest of them all <clears throat> are those who don't even read the title. They simply hate you. And as soon as you, they see your pick, or name in the thumbnail, it's on. And where are these people from this ayah? I advise you, my brothers and sisters, to change these ways. Have mercy on yourselves and think about standing before Allah before you type a single letter. Seriously, not just with in my talks, everybody, anybody, even the deviant ones. If you go on to criticize a deviant person, you also have to be just in your criticism against the innovator, against the disbeliever against the most evil and corrupt of people. Justice is required at all times. Brothers and sisters, a lot of us do not exercise this justice when we are commenting on the various data that is out there. Irrespective of the platform, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, I don't know, I don't even want to mention TikTok because TikTok shouldn't be involved in this at all. It's the worst platform, period. But besides the point, we need to be wary of what we type because a lot of us forget that the angels are writing it down. And upon you are, are angels that are keeping track of what you're saying. They're noble and they're scribes. They're noble scribes. They know what you do. They know what you type. They know what you say. Subhanallah. It's a great responsibility and a great burden that we need to bring to mind. So let's move on to the context which is related to the speaker. We said there are two contexts that are misunderstood, the topic and the speaker. We addressed the topic. When you hear a clip, understand that there's more to it, that it's part of a bigger picture, and it's on you to do your homework and research because you cannot expect a speaker to deliver to you all the points in one short clip. That's why it is titled as a clip or a short or a reel for you to know, okay, there's more to this. So either you say something positive or you don't say anything. If you're too lazy to do the research, no problem. Don't say a word by your safety. So let's go to the context of the speaker. When you come across a speaker for the first time and hear him speak, you can easily be irritated at this, at his approach or style, something that I get a lot. Not all speakers are the same. And you might be inclined towards a certain demeanor demeanor more than another. This should not let you pass a premature judgment on the speaker nevertheless. For instance, a clip might have been uh, exerted from a longer talk. Let's say that in most of the talk, the speaker was calm and collected. Then due to the nature of the topic and the involvement of emotions in these matters, the speaker gets loud and angry. You as a viewer are obliged to give him the benefit of the doubt and not leave nasty comments about how you do not like this aggressive delivery of the content and so on and so forth. Because it was contextual and it's on you to take context into consideration. If you don't like the person, no problem. Don't listen to them anymore. If my approach is, some people just can't stand me. It's okay. As soon as they see me, they, and you've, you've, you've read these comments before. I can't stand this person. I can't bear looking at him. No problem, Habibi. Go away. Go away. No one is forcing you to watch. Nobody put a gun. I don't think any one of you has been in a situation where someone put a gun to your head and say, yo, either you watch Abu Musab or wallah, I'm a bust a cap in your head. If that happened, email me. If it didn't happen, don't watch. I'm irritating. No problem. Don't watch. I'm not your cup of tea. No problem. Don't watch. Don't watch and spare us. Those comments that we didn't in, uh, uh, ask for. We did not force you to hate us and then leave a nasty comment. Tamam? The other facet of context relating to the speaker is being familiar with the person's usul. The person's foundational principles. 
the person's methodology, his overall work in general. For instance, I have praised Danielle many times for his efforts against feminism and liberalism. I have also defended him when he was attacked by Omar Suleiman and co. And then subsequently when he was attacked on that John Fontaine uh, a podcast with Abu Tawbah and Abu Omar. And those who know, know. I came to his defense on these occasions because I am not biased against or for anyone. I am only biased to the truth. Wherever the truth is, I go along with it. But since I'm a person who is swayed by the truth strictly and not by relationships and connections, unlike what some of you have accused me of, I also warn against his outlandish views when it, came, when it comes to governments and being loose in passing takfir on rulers and their supporters. He is also criticized for not filtering whom he promotes as his teachers have a terrible track record and he's bought on many dubious guests. And lastly, he was criticized for debating absolute nobodies and given them a platform to insult Islam and spread their deviance, including females, which is a problem in and of itself. Allowing a female to come on and talk on a public platform is something I've discussed in other clips. So just as we agreed, before you start complaining and what's wrong with women, uh, you know, giving talks, please go to the relevant lectures, which we will, we will leave for you in the description, inshallah, so you can see the uh, Islamic position on this according to some scholars, obviously. I'm not not forcing any opinion upon anybody. Uh, now, so with all this in mind, you can at least see where I'm coming from when I speak about an issue. Many people expect me to actually mention all these details and stances every time I happen to speak about him or about the issue. And that's not realistic, nor is it doable. So it is on you once again to research and make an effort to get the full picture by collecting the pieces of the puzzle. Can we help? Of course. We will link those other talks in the description or on the screen during the clip. You might say, you might say, this is too much work for me. We do not have time. Agreed. Then remain silent and do not get involved or comment with a biased opinion because you are lazy and can't help but express yourself. Have some discipline. Do not say anything seeking Allah's reward. Don't say anything. And when you don't say anything, seek Allah's reward. Because you know that you will be questioned about every word you type or say. I have noticed that due to this misapplication of these important Islamic guidelines, we are falling into all types of issues and fights that we are all better off without. Allah tells us in the Quran, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَا أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا وَأَشْفَقَنَا مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا Indeed, we offer the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, and they declined to bear it and feared it. But man undertook it, undertook to bear it. Indeed, he was unjust and ignorant. So do not be of those unjust and ignorant. People who take every matter lightly and spend their days harassing speakers online and wasting everyone's time, all whilst gaining sin. The issue of accusing someone, for example, someone will say, brother, you're just jealous of Daniel because he is smarter than you. What? Like that remains to be the most outrageous and the silliest claim that people make against du'at. I cannot fathom. How in the world do you think that a da'i will be jealous of another da'i when the goal of a da'i is to spread the word of Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is better in speech than he who calls to Allah? If this is my role, وَقُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Allah said regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say this is my path, I call, on, I call to Allah, I and those who follow me. If this is our role to spread the message of Islam, why would I be jealous of another person who's also spreading the message of Islam? Either he's doing it correctly, so I'm going to love him, support him, praise him, collaborate with him, and so forth. Or he's doing it incorrectly, I'm going to warn the people about those mistakes. Where would jealousy come in? Why would there be jealousy in the first place? Jealousy is when you have a, mis a, a miskeen, Toyota Echo, and then some guy is driving a Ferrari. Ah, you 
you're if you're feeble-minded and if you don't know that Allah has distributed wealth in in the wise way that He did, and that this dunya is unimportant and what's important in the akhirah, then you might feel jealous because you have a a personal problem. But even in worldly matters, we don't feel jealous. I know that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed this person. I say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Barakallahu lak. May Allah bless you. If I was jealous of Daniel, why would I praise him at any point in time? If I was jealous of Nu'man Ali Khan, why would I have praised him at any point in time? All of these are clear-cut evidences that such, such claims people make so loosely. Brother, I know that you are jealous. This is the best one. You know also, yani you received the revelation from Allah that you know. You know what it means when you say that you know? All while you're wrong. That's why we need to fear Allah before we type any of these things. Yo, it's a big deal. Anyways, since this clip is about Daniel, and to explain some of these misconceptions, let me tie this up with the confusion regarding Daniel. You can see from the comments that there was a major confusion. I will take responsibility for a portion of that. I will take responsibility for a portion of that. The thumbnail was confusing since it showed only Daniel, and while the content of the clip included attacking other du'at, who based their entire da'wah on philosophy. I did not put their pictures in the thumbnail. It's my mistake. It's uh, I should have overlooked uh, or I should have uh, 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 managed the my team, which is my family, better um, in, in a sense that I should have spotted that. But in reality, if you really fair, you will see that I did mention other du'at and you could tell that I wasn't referring to Daniel, but I will give you the benefit of the doubt that maybe I wasn't clear enough or the thumbnail was misleading. So here it is. I take responsibility for that, okay? That the thumbnail showed Daniel and I was highlighting his issues regarding debate, but then within my speech, I spoke about philosophers and people using philosophy to give da'wah. So you automatically connected that with Daniel, even though I was referring to other speakers whom you should know about already, whom you should know about already who we've mentioned in other talks. And there's reason why, there's a reason why we don't mention them all the time because uh, in forbidden the evil is only to be done when it doesn't create a bigger evil. And sadly, there are certain individuals with whom if you were to forbid the evil, it will create a bigger evil. It becomes haram to forbid the evil. It's a long story. Maybe you will get it. Maybe you will not. That's besides the point. So, I did not mention the, them by name, even though I said clearly that it's a bunch of them who operate from this paradigm. The part was not regarding Danielle. The issue then was debates. Okay, you're saying, what about debates? That's what you'll be saying. Here's my chance to help you implement justice so that you can, we can all learn together. Please watch the dedicated lecture on debates titled, Are Debates Debatable? Please understand the position of the Salaf on this much nuanced subject matter. The summary for now is that not all debates are bad, but the vast majority of them are. The fact that you're a big fan of them and enjoy watching them, which is your personal subjective opinion, does not make them in line with the methodology of the righteous predecessors. While these debates entertain many, they also lead many others astray and create doubts that they were never familiar with and have to and have no responses to either. I will not repeat the talk, so please take the time to watch it. We have linked it in the description for you. I admit that Daniel is among the best out there in handling these debates and he generally does well. I have no problem acknowledging that, further proving that I am not biased, I don't have a campaign against him and I'm not crazy either and, and just talking nonsense. I know that he does very well in this regard, but there's, an, there, there's, there's more to it. However, let's zoom out and look more analytically at the bigger picture. Consider the following, please. Number one, if the lectures were posted only on the opponent's channel, then I will agree that the benefit might outweigh the harm. But those lectures are posted on Daniel's channels as well. His followers, must be classic debate addicts by now. They, the average debate is like three hours of constant back and forth with some absolute hideous people. Just to give you an example, some dude called Mr. Girl. How are you going to debate? How will you, how will you even debate a person called Mr. Girl? David Woods, please. Should I say more? Apostate prophet, 
Astaghfirullah. And feminist hijabi. How beneficial are these debates? How much knowledge is one acquiring from them? Let's agree that you get an Iman booster when you see a Muslim defeat a Kafir or a Deviant and feel reinforced about your religion. What is at stake though? I'll tell you. First, you wasted so much time that you could have, uh, and uh, uh, so much time since that could have been achieved in a much shorter time. You don't need three and a half hours of back and forth bickering. Second, Daniel's followers are forced to have to hear people constantly insult Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And what does Allah tell us in the Quran regarding this? وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُ بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَقُودُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَنْ مِثْلُهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَامِعُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْكَافِرِينَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ جَمِيعًا Allah المستعان And it has already come down to you in the book that when you hear the verses of Allah that are being recited, that they are denied by them and ridiculed, so do not sit with them until they enter into another conversation. Indeed, you would then be like them. Indeed, Allah will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell altogether. So when the person you're debating is known for this behavior, you already know that they will insult Allah and they will insult his religion and they will mock and ridicule the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then you may not give them a platform and the ability to insult the ayat of Allah. Because Allah clearly told you in the Quran that this is not the case. We said in the lecture uh, or in the podcast with brother uh, uh, Faris, uh, are debates debatable? We explained that debates are okay with a person who will not insult Allah and his messenger and a person who you could reason with and a person who you could persuade perhaps or a person who maintains basic decent behavior. Not some uh, outlandish individuals that have absolutely, they hold no, nothing holds them back from running their mouths and saying insulting, uh, hurling insults at our religion. So that was number one point. Number two, can this be achieved by giving talks about the issue without having a debate? Yes. This is the standard indeed. Danielle does a great job in deconstructing their ideologies, falsehood, and double standards. All this can happen by him quoting them from their talks and then refuting them. But since the followers are not there to really learn about Islam, and instead they are more hyped about the nature of the debate, they prefer, they prefer it over a regular talk as it is more exciting and it feeds into their desires. Have you ever seen what the comments section look like in these live debates? You would think that those commenting are on speed or some sort of drugs. People all over the place cursing each other and hurling insults, left and right, up and down. It is a very toxic environment that is very dark and problematic. Brothers and sisters, this is, uh, this is neither normal nor acceptable. Our standards have become so low and the, follower, and the following of desires is at unparalleled levels. How many keep it real though and admit? Very few are brave and sincere enough to do so. Most are driven by whims and will argue every subject with or without a just cause. Or even if they are upon the truth, if they think they're upon the truth, it is due to arrogance about their ignorance about their religion. Sorry, it's due to ignorance about their religion and the way of the Salaf, uh, which allows them to continue in their ways. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us. So why not give a talk? If you're going to refute feminism, you could have a proper talk about the, uh, you know, the principles of feminism and how Islam addresses them. That does the job perhaps even better than you having to bring another deviant person where you discuss the same issue, but now you come with all this other baggage, all of this other evil that you cannot remove, you cannot filter, you cannot dismiss in order to deliver the same points which you could have delivered independently on your own. Hey, as long as that alternative is there, then that should be the way forward. Thirdly, where is the beneficial knowledge? It is scarce, very little. All you really learn is how to articulate an argument or how to use general logical principles to trap your opponent into confessing that they suffer from these very things that they criticize you for. You aren't really getting the dosage of Quran and Sunnah that you need to keep your Iman. You are not in touch with the scholars 
or at least with those who connect you to them and translate their works for you to increase your knowledge base and strengthen your foundations. In these debates, all you get is a rare citation every once in a while and a whole bunch of being impressed with the debater's IQ and ability to bring down his enemy. You get a rush from seeing this and you become more emotionally attached to the person until you start believing that he is the Lion of Allah and that he cannot possibly err. You then become a fanboy or a cheerleader. You get hurt when someone mentions him or calls him out. Worst of all, you adopt all his positions, the good and the bad. So you see the average follower of Daniel is quick to oppo oppose the Sunnah in speaking ill of the Muslim rulers and acting all brave by backbiting them. This is if they believe that they are Muslims in the first place. You have no idea how dangerous it is for your deen to claim that a person is no longer a Muslim based on actions that you and your teachers have taught uh, have uh, that the teachers have taught you that these are acts of kufr when their whole paradigm was established on opposing the way of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. Please listen to Abdurrahman Hassan's hot seat podcast titled Can You Rebel Against an Oppressive Muslim Ruler? to get a better idea about this hypersensitive matter of the deen. What I'm saying is the results of these debates is an attachment to the speaker, in this case, Daniel. And therefore, you will pick up on these Khariji behavior and principles, which are far worse for your religion than the little you gain, the little gain you acquire from seeing him humiliate an already humiliated, worthless opponent that deserves to be banned from walking down the street, let alone have internet and be allowed to share his ill views to the masses. Oh, now, so again, I want to re-emphasize this point about. The, when you accept this person as a speaker, then you're, you're taking all his views because you become so emotionally attached. And if you don't have enough knowledge, you can no longer make a distinction between the truth and the falsehood because you assume if he's so good in fighting liberalism, if he's so good in fighting feminism, then he must be also so good in calling out these governments for being engaged in kufr or for being uh, fake governments or puppy, uh, puppet gov governments and the list goes on. You, you, you will also take that along with the other things that you find impressive. And, you know, this is where we have to draw the line. This is where we have to draw the line. Now, pay attention. I've mentioned three points. All of the previous points were stated while making a great positive assumption that Daniel is qualified to debate in the first place. The truth is that from an intellectual point of view, he is. He often is smarter than the person he's debating and manages to embarrass them, I admit. However, from a legislative, theological, and jurisprudential point of view, this is not the case at all. He just happens to debate some major losers who are not skilled in citing evidences from our sources. If he were to debate someone more skilled, I truly believe that Daniel does not have enough knowledge of the evidences within the Quran and the Sunnah to defend Islam adequately. And if he did know the evidences, he surely does not adhere to the understanding of the early generations in this regard, which is another issue altogether. If we continue to support this debate trend, we are setting him up for an, in, a, a, an eventual loss and defeat. You, the followers, will also bear the tax for such disaster as you supported this all along. If time allowed, I would have cited the many instances I have come across where he failed in citing basic textual evidence to substantiate the Islamic stance. I do not want to do that. Uh, I do not want to do that because it's draining for everyone and I would rather spend this time in working on the other necessary talk regarding using philosophy to give da'wah and attributing that to Ibn Taymiyyah. In conclusion, Daniel is doing great work for Islam against modern uh, and false ideologies. His work is appreciated as long as he writes articles, gives lectures, or makes these funky videos to tackle such falsehood. He has a nice a bunch of good videos where he speaks about these general matters. Him debating deviants and disbelievers does more harm than good, and his views and statements on rulers and governments are extremely problem problematic and concerning. For the record, I have discussed these matters with him in private. We had a long chat, long voice messages back and forth. And I was very shocked to hear some of the things he said. I do not, I did not seek his permission to share these views of his with you. So I will respect the private nature and I will keep him to myself. 
Lastly, the, his affiliate and the people he praises, his affiliates and the people he praises uh, are the type which should be warned against due to their strong Khariji behavior and agenda. People like Haytham Saifuddin, who, uh, who casually passes takfir on rulers. Uh, you can Google all this if you want to know all the details. I don't want to go there. But the, the, if the people that Daniel affiliates with or he supports, I don't want to call him his teacher because I've heard people say that Haytham is his teacher. I I'm not in a position to confirm that that's one of his teachers. It's someone that he praises, but it doesn't mean that he's his teacher. Either way, the fact that he praises someone with this with this kind of uh, uh, ideology, and then Daniel himself expresses those statements on his own in different contexts, suggests that at least in this regard, he's definitely learning that from him, or he agrees with him. Maybe Daniel taught Haytham, I don't know. Either way, those are very, very dangerous positions. For you to walk around and think that this kingdom, or that kingdom, and this country, there's no Islamic rulership, there's no Muslim ruler, there's no Muslim government, and that everybody is, is an apostate walking around, and they're causing other people to apostate, because his idea is that because of those people are in charge, they're making other people leave Islam. These are things that you don't want to meet Allah with. You don't want to meet Allah with those kinds of statements, with this kind of responsibility. The Prophet ﷺ severely warned us against this. The Prophet ﷺ was, was mad at Usama when Usama killed a man in a battlefield who clearly said, La we thought he said La ilaha illallah to protect himself from death. He had just killed so many Muslims and Usama got a hold of him and the man said La ilaha illallah and Usama killed the Prophet ﷺ said, Aqataltahu ba'da an qala La ilaha illallah, what will you do with La ilaha, la ilaha illallah on Yawm al-Qiyamah? Did you kill him after he said La ilaha illallah? He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, he was saying it to, to save himself. Prophet ﷺ kept saying, what will you do with La ilaha illallah on Yawm al-Qiyamah? Usama said, I, had, I wished I had not become a Muslim at that, yet, meaning later. He wished he had become Muslim later because that was the heaviest thing on him. This is a person in the battlefield who's saying La ilaha illallah just, yeah, just, just to save his neck. This is the importance. Now you have these people saying la ilaha illallah, la 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 la, forget about them. This is just, they're a bunch of hypocrites and liars. You don't want to meet Allah with this. That's all I'm saying for you, the average viewer, the average, average listener, the one who does not know any better. Do not, do not follow that khariji manhaj that the Prophet sallallahu warned us against all the way back from the time of Dhul Khuwaisira. They, they, they passed takfir on the Sahaba. Ikhwan. Daniel sadly is among the promoters of this criticism of the people in charge is not from the way of, not from the way of the sunnah that's the bottom line listen to Abdul Sheikh Abdul Rahman Hassan's podcast I've spoken about this with other brothers on on multiple occasions you can get that information from there I'm not going to repeat the lecture but I'm just saying be wary of Daniel's positions in this regard because they will influence you and if you meet Allah Azza wa Jal having passed takfir on someone and that person is innocent of it it will fall back on you and this is the hadith of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, kafir, ahaduhuma, aw kama qala salam. Whoever says to his brother, you're a kafir, one of them is going to end up with it. So why? Why are you going in that direction? I'm not saying that the rulers are Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abu Bakr Siddiq and MashaAllah. They do. No, 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 no. We understand. There's all types of calamities. There's all types of issues. But we follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ in terms of what we can and what we cannot say. And if we want to say something, how we say it and who are the right people to say it, under which context, because our deen is not a picnic and it's not a Game Boy. Our deen is very particular about how to go about these very vital matters for the Ummah. And we're simply following the, the, the Sunnah and what, what could be an ijma. It's actually an ijma of the Salaf about not rebelling and going against the Muslim rulers. Al-Muhim. Uh, now, so sadly, Daniel is on the same page as they are in this regard, and this alone is enough to make this person among those from whom it is not permissible for you to listen to or learn Islam from. This is how serious the issue is. And for those who already took a side, since they believe what he believes, I invite you to learn Islam from the people of knowledge who follow the way of the Prophet وسلم, his companions and the early, rightly guided generations. If you do, the truth will be made clear from falsehood and you will no longer be deceived by the blind attacks against those who call to the way of the Salaf or the righteous predecessors. That is the bottom line. So you could see that I, I strove to seek uh, fairness and justice in what I say 
you could see when I praise the person for what is something something that we can we can all agree is praiseworthy and criticize when something is worthy of being criticized. This is how we should all conduct ourselves. Speakers, du'at, people of knowledge, and you, my brother and sister. You, the one listening. You, the one commenting. You have the same obligation. Don't think that everything falls on us and, and you're off the hook. A lot of you think that you're off the hook, that, oh, I'm just a layman, and as a layman, I get to say whatever you want. No, Habibi. We don't get to say whatever we want. You don't get to say whatever you want. Everybody's going to be held accountable. So let us all deal with these matters maturely. Always, every time you come across a clip that you don't understand, please take a time out and try to do some research because you care before you uh, comment or voice your opinion. If you're too lazy to do so, then spare everybody the unnecessary negative comment because for your own good, believe me, we get the good deeds. Just so we can be clear. When you say, I know that you're jealous of him or you curse me out, or you call me anything, you're giving me your good deeds. Do you think I don't want your good deeds? Wallahi, I want all of your good deeds. Every one of them, because I'm a miskeen. I don't have enough good deeds in my account. So you'll be helping me out. But I also love for you what I love for myself. And it's an, it's an uh, obligation on me to advise you and to, to want for you what I want for me. So in spite of me wanting your good deeds, I cannot also deceive you into telling you, yeah, yeah, keep talking trash about me. I'm just going to be happy about it. You need to protect yourself from the punishment of Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah because you don't only do this with me. You do this, I'm sure, with a lot of channels. You're all over the place, jumping around like a rabbit, leaving, you know, just harassing people. This is what's making the da'wah scene so problematic. This is why all these ongoing fights are happening because the followers are, are, are constantly throwing fuel to the fire. Instead of being rational, um, decent, uh, good Muslims who try to put out a fire, try to minimize the harm, try to reconcile between the people, help us reconcile. Instead of helping us, you know, create a bigger enmity. If we all join forces upon the truth, then we could be a lot more productive. But we're wasting our time and energy and going back and forth. Primarily because some people among the du'at do not want to comply with the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the righteous, righteous predecessors, there's nothing we can do about it. And because the followers are not helping in this regard either. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ وَلِجَمِيعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ وَعَفَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا سَلَفْ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيَنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَر